Welcome to your quick guide to using Adobe Audition. To begin your Adobe Audition session, simply click the AU icon on your desktop and a new session will open. Your session is where Adobe remembers all the edits you want to make to the original file. It does not place the files in the session, it is merely a space for you to view your original files. An Adobe Audition session allows you to prepare a whole new track using bits and pieces from your original files which you will then mix down to produce an entirely new track. Now on your screen you will see the Adobe Audition interface. Here we will import our files into the file pane or bin, prepare our files by normalizing them, arrange and edit our files in multitrack, mix down our session to a single track, make any minor changes in edit view, and finally save as into the appropriate file type. On the left, you will see the files bin. This is where you will import your files you wish to use in your audition session. Simply right click in the grey space and select import. You will now need to locate the files you wish to use. A good idea is to store your files in a clearly marked folder on your external hard drive. Once you've selected the files you wish to import, click open. In this window, you can also preview your files to make sure you have chosen the correct ones. The selected files will now appear in your bin. To begin the editing process, you will need to select, drag and drop your file into a track on the timeline. There are a few ways you can view your timeline. For most editing, you will use multi-track view, which is ideal for sequencing your tracks and ordering your story. You may also like to use edit view for final touch-ups to the mix down track. In multi-track view, you will see an M, an S, and an R. The M will mute your track, so if you are working across two or more tracks, this tool will allow you to hear a different track. S stands for solo. Instead of muting each track you don't want to hear at any one time, you can click on the S in the track and it will automatically mute all other tracks. Finally, the R is for record. You will use this function when recording voiceovers or interviews in the recording booths. For more information on how to use the recording booths, check out the MAPS YouTube tutorial on how to operate the SJC recording booths. In each track, you will also see a dial that manages the entire track's volume and pan. The pan refers to which speaker the sound will come out of. Now that your track is in the timeline, you can scrub through the audio to find bits you would like to use. The spacebar on your keyboard acts as a play-pause button, or you can use the transport tools in the lower left of your interface. The yellow arrow acts as your playhead or current time indicator, which you can click and drag up and down the timeline, or you can use one of the four pointer icons. The hybrid tool, the time selection tool, the move copy tool to adjust and rearrange your clip, and the scrub tool to hear audio as you scrub through the clip. When you play back your track, you will notice the levels bar across the bottom of your interface and in the track you are listening to. These levels should be nice and golden to ensure the best quality sound. Aim to have the levels somewhere above minus 12 and at a maximum of minus 3 as a general rule of thumb. If you need to normalize your track so that the levels are golden, you can double click on a clip in the track or select the track you wish to use to normalize and then click edit in the top left under file. You will be able to see the wave formation and levels in greater detail. On the right, you will see the numbers corresponding to the levels. Select either the entire wave or make a specific selection that you want to normalize and a little dial will appear. You will use this dial to adjust the levels. You can double click on the dial and enter a specific number or you can click under the dial, move your mouse left or right to see the wave formation and choose your levels visually. Once you've finished, return to multitrack by clicking the multitrack button. You will see your wave formations reflect the changes you made in edit view. When you are editing, there are a few ways you can choose selections of audio in your clip to cut, copy and rearrange. Using the hybrid or time selection tool, you can select the audio you want by clicking and dragging your mouse from the beginning to the end of the section you want to use, and either cut or copy using Ctrl C for copy or Ctrl X for cut, and paste the selected material into another track using Ctrl V. You can also right click on the selection for options. To split clips, place your playhead or CTI where you wish to split the clip. Right click select split, you can then click on the move copy pointer to see the changes you've made. 
When editing, you can zoom in and out of the track by using the scroll wheel while the mouse is over the green bar at the top of the timeline, or you can use the plus and minus keys on your keyboard. To view all clips in your timeline, you can also hit the backslash key above the enter key on your keyboard. You can lengthen and shorten your selections by dragging the ends in or out, and you can delete parts of the clip by making a selection and hitting delete on your keyboard. To undo any changes you've made, use Ctrl Z on your keyboard. Once you have found the parts of the track you want to use in your final mix down, you can edit other tracks by dragging and dropping them from the bin. Use the tools discussed to make your selection and changes to the track. Once you have made your adjustments to the track and sequenced them in the timeline, you can then begin applying effects to finish off your work. To fade, select the clip you wish to fade out or into and hover the mouse over the top left and right grey boxes. Click the little grey box and drag it to create a fade. You can also drop the volume on parts of clips. This may be useful if you want to have a music track under your interview, for example. The easiest way to do this is to split the clip, then lower the volume. Place the playhead where you want to split the clip. Now, click the white squares one at a time at the top of your selected clip and drag them to the preferred level. Do this for the left and right white squares or you can adjust one or the other depending on your intended effect. Once you have sequenced your timeline and applied the appropriate effects, you may find your timeline looks like a staircase or zigzag. When you have finished structuring your timeline, you are ready to export. Before you export your file mixdown, you should make sure that you save the audition session if you haven't already. To do this, click File, Save Session or Save Session As. Choose the appropriate folder to save your work in. It is strongly recommended that you save your Adobe Audition file with your original files on your external hard drive. Your session is not the final track you will submit for your assignments. It is simply a file that has remembered all the bits you want to use from your original audio. So keep the session file and the original audio files nice and close together. Once you have saved your session, click on File again. Scroll to Export and select Audio Mixdown. Name your file and select the appropriate format. WAV files and MP3 files are the most common file types. Before submitting your assignments, make sure you confirm the required for file format. Today we'll use MP3. Select MP3 Pro, then click on Options. You may need to make some adjustments to the output quality of your track. Today, we'll use 192 kilobytes per second. This is a good compromise between size and quality for your track. In the Presets drop-down menu, select 192 kilobytes per second, then click OK. Before saving the file, make sure you are mixing down the correct tracks. If you want to mix down specific tracks, such as 2 and 3 into a single track for example, you can make that selection here. Click Save and wait for your track to mix down into one track. It will automatically open in Edit View for you to playback, or you can minimise your Adobe Audition window and listen to the playback in a regular audio player. Be sure to listen to your entire track to pick up any glitches or mistakes before submitting or broadcasting your work. That completes your quick guide to using Adobe Audition. For more information on sound editing in Adobe Audition or operating the school's recording equipment, be sure to sign up for the OWL session on audio recording and editing.